I find what's happening right now in Columbia, South Carolina, just fascinating. And I know a lot of you have been preoccupied with your own programs, so you may not be fully aware of what's happening there. Well, let me take you down the road of what's been happening at Carolina right quick. So the Mood Tracker at South Carolina, if you've missed it, you know Shane Beamer. Well, maybe you don't. So Shane Beamer was hired as the head coach there. And there's, a, there's an analogy we use frequently on the show that I'm going to use to describe the Mood Tracker for South Carolina. And that is still trying to nail Jello to the wall. The thing about trying to nail Jello to the wall is you're an idiot if you're trying it. So keep this metaphorical. But if you ever try to nail Jello to a wall, it doesn't matter how right you are. It doesn't matter about the precision, about the placement, about the execution and your form. It doesn't matter because it's Jello. So the substance will not allow it to stick to whatever you're trying to nail it to. And South Carolina fans, I was over on the Big Spur on the message board there today, and I was interacting with you guys. That thread is like five or six pages deep right now, and all I did was I went on the Big Spur, which is our 24-7 Sports Carolina website and message board. Um, check it out if you haven't already, especially if you're a Carolina fan. I went on there, and I said, hey, I'm talking about this tonight. How do you guys feel? Like if I were to ask you a word or a phrase, describe your mood towards the Carolina program right now, I kind of got mixed reactions, and here's the reason. Uh, on one hand... There was a huge groundswell of support to hire Shane Beamer away from Oklahoma. They wanted one of their own because there was a lot of disdain. And as, as much as they loved the idea of bringing in Shane Beamer, it was kind of juxtaposed to how much they loathed in the latter days of his tenure, Will Muschamp. So you got him. And so he comes in, and they wanted one of their own. They got one of their own. They land him. The next chapter in this story might as well be written in Portuguese because it gets really, really complicated. You got to understand, like I said, they love Shane Beamer. They love the hire there. And they loathed Will Muschamp. Well, here's the catch-22. Beamer initially decided to keep some of Will Muschamp's pieces. So he was going to keep Mike Bobo, for example, as offensive coordinator. Uh, you know, Tracy Rocker was a Will Muschamp hire. So you're going to initially keep them, but then they exit. And they head to Auburn, for example, or, uh, you know, Drew Hughes, player personnel type. He leaves for Texas. Well, here's the reaction. The reaction is the guy I love, if I'm a, if I'm a Carolina fan, uh, Shane Beamer over here, the guy I love, it was his choice. And if, if he had his way, he was going to keep these guys. But yet I cannot stand Will Muschamp. And I, as a result, want to pressure wash any sign, any semblance, any stink of Will Muschamp off of this program. And so if it means us losing some of the coaches that were his coaches in the process and some of the personnel pieces that he had here in the process, even if it means we're losing guys that Beamer wanted to keep around. You know what? If we're going to start near ground zero, if we're going to start close to scratch, let's go ahead and suck it up. Let's bite the bullet and let's start from absolute scratch and let's have 100% new flavor in here. That's how a lot of folks at Carolina feel right now. And you know what? It may be that in the immediacy, I don't know, it cost you a win this year, let's just say. It cost you landing a four-star tight end on the recruiting trail this year. I, I don't know. Like, maybe it cost you Gunnar Stockton, for example, the five-star quarterback that has since decommitted. Even if that's the case, the mood amongst a lot of Carolina fans is, that's fine. Because if we got to get rid of them in order to make this program 100% Shane Beamers, then so be it. We'll do it. So there's cautious optimism. Uh, there's also the willingness, I think, right now to accept the idea of a rebuild only because it was going to have to happen anyway. You know, and it's like it, the, the foundation sucks, so let's not try and rebuild. Let's not even keep the frame of the house. Let's just completely blowtorch everything, and let's build a firm foundation. Whatever the record is in year one, that's fine. As long as we can look around. If I'm a Gamecock fan, this is how I'm feeling right now. As long as I can look around at the end of year one, and I can see at least a foundation has been poured that I feel confident we can build on, I'm good. If that means five and seven, if it means six and six, or it means seven and five, whatever. Uh, the foundation is a lot more important than the record in year one. And then in year two, if I see it start to take shape a little bit more, if I see tangible progress, maybe not result-oriented, but process-oriented in nature, I'm cool. What I don't want to do is just twist in the wind every year, and every year is isolated in and of itself, and there's really no cohesion. There's really no direction. You can't look back 2021, 22, 23, and year over year, see a progression towards something that you're building towards. That's not where I want to go back to. So I just want to see progression towards something, something I can look forward to, whether it's in 2023 or 2025, whatever. 
please. I've twisted in the wind long enough. Just give me, just build towards something. And that's the mood tracker.